Hello everyone, uh, if you're watching this live on Facebook or if you are seeing this later on YouTube, um, I'm going to try and do a video each Tuesday. During the Summer of Zombie Tour, I did one every day as we were um, sharing with those authors, but uh, probably on Tuesdays I'll do that now. Uh, Thursdays I'll have a post up. This week's post is going to be part of the series on uh, Stephen King Revisited. Cemetery Dance is uh, going through the process. Uh, Richard Chismar is... Um, reading all of Stephen King's works in order. Uh, I'm a little bit behind him, but um, I'm doing so also to kind of try and improve my craft with writing. And uh, I'm up to the book Rage, which he wrote as Bachman. And um, each book I do a before I read it, where I talk about kind of where I first encountered that book or details about that. And then I do an after where I kind of write down the notes that I have. The notes may not be useful to everybody, but it's what I picked up um, as, as a writer trying to be a better writer. Uh, so After Rage will be what's posting on Thursday, and I'll put that post up. Um, and then I'll link it back to the Before Rage, and we can talk about that. Um, rage is one of those that, and I'll talk about this in the post some, or one that Stephen King is not uh, particularly keen on. It's a book that he has trouble with. Um, for a number of reasons, uh, most of them his his uh, particular political views and um, how he feels like he portrayed gun violence in that particular book. Um, getting into the politics and stuff, I've been teasing friends on Facebook about uh, just not caring about voting as much as I used to. Not that I, I actually, not that I think it's it doesn't matter, but just that I just don't choose to be upset about it. And... Um, just not real, you know, I, in, in my mind, whether I get very, very upset or whether I don't participate at all, the same person will end up being president and historically they'll look back on that person however they choose to. Um, and I'm just fine with that. Um, I just, my view on it is more historical now than it is in, in the moment. Um, I do have political opinions and I used to express those more in the, in the past, but anything that I feel like is important enough um, for me to say something about, I'm going to say it in fiction. That's just the, the way I tend to do those things now. And even then, um, I'm not necessarily going to preach a viewpoint, and I might actually write the story from the, the opposing viewpoint. So uh, it's going to be more of an exploration than it is, you know, a, a treatise of, of what I might think. Um, and I'm, I'm fine even trying to make the strong argument for the other side uh, in, in terms of, you know, how the story plays out. It just, it seems like the fiction matters more. Uh, you know, if I, if I put a Facebook post up, people might read it, they might not. They're probably going to be entrenched within their ideas. If I write a short story or a novel, I might have people's attention for hours or days. And um, in a way, they're a captive audience then. So just fiction, in that sense, has more power to communicate ideas it also lasts much longer. Um, it, it's the thing that'll still be there after we're gone. We still pick up fiction from a hundred years ago and read it and study it. Whereas, you know, these you know, Facebook posts and articles and things like that, they seem like they're important and the ideas matter. And we say things like that, you know, the internet is forever. Uh, but the truth is the internet may be forever, you know, and some of those th and the things we put on there might be able to be found but nobody's looking anymore after a few hours or a few days. So um, it, it may be forever, but it's uh, something forever that nobody's looking at anymore. It's not, it's not a monument. It's a, it's a lost uh, relic. Um, so I just, I just reached a point where I don't particularly feel like engaging in the, in the drama of um, arguing the politics. If, if something is, important enough for me to express, I'm going to express it through fiction. It's just the way I, I'm going to tend to do it. Um, I'm in the middle of a novel that's kind of given me some trouble. Uh, I'm still going to complete it, uh, but it's called My Racist Summer, and um, it's about a uh, you know progressive college student, a general journalism student, that um, accidentally gets placed as an intern at a white supremacist newspaper. And uh, they're covering the election of you know 2016 through the summer of 2016. So all the things that are in the news now 
play out for these characters, you know, while there's sort of a crime story um, over the top of it too. And, uh, you know, their reactions to it and kind of looking at these events through the lens of, um, you know, the, the extremists on one side. Interestingly, uh, a lot of the dialogue that I'm pulling is just straight from social media. Like, I'll just grab up details from a meme or comments from a post or something like that and just use those almost directly into the mouths of um, the racists in the story. And it, it that vitriol just kind of flows naturally through those characters and, and just seems to fit right in when it's the stuff that we're absorbing from social media all the time. Um, I'm not sure how that story's going to turn out. I feel like I got decent characters and I, I feel like the story's shaping up. It is a bit tougher than I expected. Uh, it's just, it's a lot to deal with and a lot to um, to try and uh, mitigate through, the, through that story, but we'll see how that plays out. And uh, hopefully, again, it will be the, you know, the fiction that says what, um, what needs to be said or helps people see what needs to be seen. So maybe, maybe it'll, it'll turn out okay that way. Um, thank you for listening in. I'll be posting um, my blog post on Thursday, and, and you guys can see what I learned from the story Rage. Thank you very much.